We are beneath the surface of the largest river in the Pacific Northwest. This is where massive salmon meet an even larger prehistoric looking fish. The salmon can grow up to four and a half feet long, but white sturgeon can grow up to 20 feet long and weigh more than 1,800 pounds. We are witnessing the final life stage of the king salmon in the Columbia River. In the ocean, the salmon are a metallic silver and all the Chinook generally look the same. But throughout their arduous journey, things begin to change. Once the salmon enter the rivers and are in fresh water, they lose their silver scales. Now the male and female salmon begin to look very different. The male buck Chinook becomes dark red with a kite jaw and thick shoulders. The female hen Chinook is skinnier and dull colored with a white underside. There are other important differences you may notice. Some of the fish are missing their second dorsal fin, also called the adipose fin. Most of the fall Chinook salmon in this area are wild and still have their adipose fin intact. Hatchery Chinook typically have this fin clipped before they enter the river system. The Chinook salmon may be here to spawn, but the sturgeon have something else in mind. The white sturgeon forage among the river rocks for tasty salmon roe. The deep waters of the Columbia River are the year-round home to North America's largest freshwater fish. Only during the salmon spawning season will the humongous white sturgeon venture into the shallower waters. These ancient fish haven't evolved much in the last several hundred million years and are basically dinosaurs. Sturgeon are built from cartilage like a shark. The body is covered with large bony plates called chutes instead of scales. White sturgeon are typically five to 10 feet long, but they continue to grow their entire life. When a white sturgeon lives, to 100 years, it can grow to an enormous size, reaching lengths of the largest great white shark. The sturgeon often feed in groups, actively vacuuming up the salmon eggs. Yum! Fresh salmon roe. The spawning salmon become very territorial and aggressive toward the competition. As seen from a stationary camera in the rocks, the fish are very active, even without any human interaction. These salmon have traveled over 500 miles from the ocean to arrive here in the river, where they will soon die in the cold waters. Prior to their migration, the king salmon have been living in the Pacific Ocean around Alaska for the last two to five years. The small rocks along the riverbed and the fast moving, well oxygenated water create the perfect spawning ground for the Chinook. The hen digs a shallow depression with her tail and lays up to 5,000 eggs. The nest is called a red. Once the buck swims over the eggs and deposits his milt, the female covers the fertilized eggs with small rocks. After the salmon lay and fertilize their eggs, both bucks and hens will guard the nest until their eventual death. The salmon eggs will hatch in about three months. 
In the spring, the fry will emerge from the rocks. The young salmon live in the fresh water for up to a year before they migrate downriver to the ocean to grow into adults. The adult salmon will return back from the ocean in two to five years. Amazingly, the salmon find their way back to the exact same location in the riverbed to spawn. Scientists believe they do this using smell, the Earth's magnetism, and the stars. But no one really knows for sure. What do you think? There are a few massive Chinook in the river. The bucks can become very girthy. Some of the sturgeon here are ginormous. There are sections of the river that are more like a singles bar where the salmon have not yet nested and are waiting to spawn. They are still looking for that perfect mate. Chinook jacks are males that only spend one to two years in the sea. They are much smaller than adult bucks. Jacks are able to successfully sneak spawn in spite of efforts of the fully grown bucks and hens to ward them off. There are small female jills that can lay eggs. Scientists believe jacks and jills exist because they create genetic diversity and protection against sudden environmental changes. The smaller jacks are oftentimes hiding behind the much bigger buck salmon. Some of the sturgeon in this river are very large. Given their incredible size, how old do you think they are? There is also an occasional steelhead in the river. The biggest bucks really stand out. I wonder how much some of these Chinook weigh. We are back at the singles bar where the fish are swimming around pretty actively. They are pretty healthy still and do not have any white spots. They will find a mate and nest soon. Some of the fish have large white spots. These spots are decaying flesh. The fish will die soon. They are basically like swimming zombies at this point. The salmon are looking very haggard. They will continue to guard their red until their eventual death. There are oftentimes wild Chinook and hatchery Chinook breeding together in this area of the river. The salmon die a few weeks after they spawn. What a life, spawn once, then die. Without this life-giving sacrifice, the ecological system and food supply would be affected. Through their decaying carcasses, the salmon play a vital role bringing essential ocean nutrients 500 miles up the river. It is important to recognize that without the salmon's unique contribution, much of our ecosystem would fail.
Salmon are called a keystone species. This means they have a disproportionately large impact on their ecosystem relative to how many there are. If a keystone species were to disappear, their ecosystem would change significantly. After they spawn, rotting salmon carcasses in the river transfer valuable nutrients from the ocean to land. Scientists have traced nutrients from salmon bodies and found them in mosses, herbs, shrubs, trees, insects, birds, bears, and wolves. Sadly, the Columbia River Chinook population remains at a high risk with low numbers of naturally spawning fish. The Columbia River Basin once produced between 10 and 15 million salmon annually. Today, annual salmon production in the Columbia Basin is around 1 million. This is only 10% of what it once was. And this number of fish includes the hatchery programs. Nature needs the salmon. Thank you for watching.